Political cross-dressing, Tom, how much of it do you think is going to go on this time? How much kind of candidate selection do you think people are going to engage in? I like this candidate, I don't like that one. I think Tessa's right that this is going to be a Brexit election. And I think that will enable more tactical decision-making than before. Um, do I think Labour voters should be voting Liberal Democrat? I don't, because in the end, I don't think Labour can win the election. But I do think we need to have a strong opposition after the election. And at some point, we're going to have a different leader than Jeremy Corbyn, and they need to inherit some MPs and some spirit within the Labour Party. Craig, I asked uh, Tessa Jowell about you know, whether she would vote for Kate Hoey. How should Michael Heseltine vote in this election? Give, give him some advice. What should he do? I mean, he's obviously... Well, I'm, I'm not going to advise Michael <laughs> Heseltine how to vote. What I think was interesting about what Tessa was saying there, though, is she's right. In, to some extent, this is largely going to be a Brexit election. But I think it's a Brexit election where the majority of the electorate understand that it's going to happen. And they're going to ask the question, who is most competent to deal with this biggest of issues? And the second thing that's really important is, who's going to be the most effective leader? Now, by a country mile, Theresa May is ahead in that front. And I suspect when those two questions are asked, who's the best leader, who's the most competent to deal with the biggest issue, then the answer for a lot of people will be obvious. Tom, do Labour need to come up with an alternative Brexit plan? Do they need to actually have a specific plan? Here's our plan for Brexit. It is different to Theresa May's. Vote for ours if you like. Yeah, I think they do. Point. I mean, I think uh, uh, one, of the, one of the problems today, I think, is you've seen Labour almost trying to change the subject. They want to talk about the economy. They want to talk about NHS. They've got to embrace that this is about Brexit. And they've got to get some clarity. They've got to get some distinctiveness. Because they're not going to uh, get, get anywhere by saying, well, we'll take a little bit of immigration and we'll try and get some access to the single market. People need to know where they stand on this central issue of our generation. I don't. <laughs> right, you worked in the party. OK, let's go for a little bit of how you would run this election if you were running it. Craig, maybe you've told us you would run this on leadership. I would, I would ask those two questions. If you're ahead in the polls and you're ahead on leadership, those are the two natural questions. And what I think you'll see is the Conservative Party over the next seven weeks constantly asking those questions. Who's best to deal with Brexit? Who's got the best leader? They feel they know the answers. They feel the stars have aligned. You've got the Labour Party in total disarray. I, interesting point that Tom makes about you've got to have a clear position on Brexit. When you've got half of your seats remain and half leave, that's a very difficult thing. That is a, that is a problem. What would be your advice to the Tories, Tom, on how to run this election? We'll come to Labour in a second. <laughs> I think they've probably taken it. Um, I mean, Theresa May holds all the cards. She is trying to pitch this as who do you trust to get the best deal for Britain? And the alternative for Labour of trying to make it about anything else than Brexit is it comes down to the personality of the leader, and Theresa May is going to win on that. Right. So she's framing it about her leadership in the Brexit negotiations, and that, that looks very I was I was down on Abingdon Green earlier today, and I did quite a few interviews, and quite a lot of the next to Labour people, and the only people who were really coming out for Labour were people like Tom, who were basically feeling a bit awkward about the reality of the current leadership. And I think that that's another real problem during this campaign, is that there's a lot of Labour people who are thinking, maybe if Jeremy Corbyn just gets damaged that little bit, we'll knock him out and we can have somebody who's a bit we'll more put, effective. We'll put that to Emily Thornberry, who's going to be on in a minute. What, how would you run this if you were Labour, Craig? What would, what would be your advice to Labour? Well, I, I would be like the Irishman who's asked direction to say, well, I wouldn't start from here. I mean, they're in an incredibly difficult situation. They've got a leader who is seen broadly as incompetent. They are split down the middle. Um, I think that the reality is you are going to have to try and force it onto issues like the NHS, education, um, you know, there's a lot of divisiveness and seen around See, grammar I think schools, that kind of thing. You're saying something which we think they're, they're doing, which is trying to talk about NHS and, and other things. And maybe, Tom, that is the best, the best place. They've got a mountain to climb. I mean, that is the best thing for them I, to I do. think if they don't take this opportunity to get clarity on Brexit, they're going to suffer even more because it's going to become an election about Jeremy Corbyn versus Theresa May. They've got this one opportunity now to get some clarity on this key issue. And I think they could say, that, you know, this is an election which, which Theresa May looks incredibly strong, but she's actually called it out of weakness because she knows Brexit is going to be a disaster. She knows it's not going to be a land of milk and honey. And so she's cutting and running before the, 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 the reality bites for Brexit. And so this is actually Theresa May being weak rather than strong.